Coming up on Wavelength, see how the LCRA is helping people with disabilities find jobs. And LCRA recruits former board members for an important new mission. And we'll introduce you to the newest scholarship winners. All that and much more coming up on Wavelength. From the Lower Colorado River Authority, this is Wavelength. The creation of this new river authority will help electrify rural Texas. And so today, we gather here to dedicate this mighty structure for Canada. This has been a great organization for 60 years. It's going to be a great organization for a long time to come. everyone and welcome to the July August edition of Wavelength. Well just as everyone was getting comfortable talking about the drought here in central Texas, the skies opened up in July and dumped a record amount of rainfall over the Colorado watershed. The heaviest rain hit near Johnson City where the Perdinalis River went on a week-long rampage. At one point, the Perdinalis was 12 feet above flood stage and was flowing at an amazing 104,000 cubic feet per second. LCRA's river operations were immediately on top of the situation and soon had gates open on Mansfield Dam and Tom Miller Dam. In a little more than a week, Lake Travis rose 28 feet to an elevation of 693. More than 100 billion gallons of water were captured in just over a week. There is little doubt that without Mansfield Dam, the city of Austin and other downstream communities would likely have been devastated by these floodwaters. July is typically about the driest month of the year. We generally see right around two inches of rain. Uh, and in, annually, over parts of the hill country, we generally see about 28 to 30 inches of rain. This July so far, uh, one of the highest totals we've already seen is 32 inches of rain. So that means parts of the hill country already saw more than a year's worth of rain in just about a five-day period. Although the floodwaters were able to be passed safely through the system, there is concern about the large amount of hydrilla that was pulled up from the lake bed. It will likely take months to determine what, if any, impact the loose hydrilla will have on the river below Lake Austin. The unemployment rate in the United States averages 4%. For people with disabilities, that rate jumps to 74%. Now in Travis County alone, there are 150,000 people with disabilities, most of whom are eagerly awaiting an opportunity to join the workforce. What do you think in your environments are current positions that have the opportunities possibly to have a targeted market for uh, disabilities? Dispelling myths about hiring people with disabilities was the subject of this seminar held at LCRA recently by the Central Texas Business Leadership Network. This coalition of local employers is committed to recruiting and hiring persons with disabilities. I don't want you to underestimate the, the difference in management that's required. But again, as we all hire different people, the diversity of anybody coming to the table is a different way to manage people. You just have to take it from that perspective. Don Rettberg and his parents were asked to attend the seminar and share their personal experience at the LCRA. Don Rettberg has Down syndrome. He started at LCRA in 1992 as a high school summer intern. He has now been a full-time employee for nearly three years. Don's success at LCRA is due in part to the carving out of job responsibilities that fit his special abilities. This job means to me a lot because I can do nice things for my family. His attention to detail, punctuality, and positive attitude have earned him the respect and friendship of so many fellow employees. Did you see the charge I sent Heather? Yes, I did. You did a great job on them. Thank you very much for meeting that deadline. You're welcome. We notice the meaning that this has in his life, in our lives, our whole entire family's life, and the pride. And it, the same pride has permeated 
a lot of Don's friends and families to the point that uh, we think that there are many more young people that can handle the job opportunities that are there, but that has to be structured right. Don received a special honor earlier this year when he was named to the Youth Advisory Committee to the Presidential Task Force on Employment of Adults with Disabilities. He was one of 15 young people chosen from across the country to travel to Washington, D.C. Our first meeting was basically to, um, to develop issues to take back to the Secretary of Labor to help people with disabilities in the workplace. Don was the only person on that committee with Down syndrome. At first, I was a little bit overwhelmed at his selection, but then I realized that there's an array of disabilities, and indeed, he, he needed to be on that committee for whatever positive input he could make. Don has also recently joined the LCRA Toastmasters Club, where he is polishing his public speaking skills. For more information about employment opportunities for people with disabilities, contact Partnership at Work, a network of agencies in the greater Austin area that provide employment services to businesses and people with disabilities. Thank you for getting me here to LCRA. The Fayette Power Project in LaGrange is going to be making some improvements over the next 10 years that environmental regulators hope will set a national trend. At a news conference at the LCRA main offices, Governor Rick Perry, along with EPA Region 6 Administrator Greg Cook, TNRCC Executive Director Jeff Sadis, and Austin Mayor Gus Garcia, joined LCRA's General Manager Joe Beal to announce a plan to dramatically cut emissions at Units 1 and 2 at the Fayette Power Project. Today we're announcing an innovative regulatory strategy that will be the first of its kind in the electric industry in the state of Texas. We call this approach a flex permit. The TNRCC, which issues permits for power plants to operate under, calls this a flexible permit because it allows the LCRA the flexibility to make capital improvements to the aging units while at the same time agreeing to install scrubbers which will reduce sulfur dioxide emissions from the two units by 90 percent. With the approval of this flexible air quality permit by the Texas Natural Resource Conservation Commission, uh, the Fayette Power Project will be able to produce low-cost reliable energy uh, in an environmentally responsible way for Central Texas. Unit 3 at FPP already has scrubbers, which means when the work is completed, the Fayette Power Project will be among the very cleanest coal-fired plants in the country. When people buy electric power, they want power and expect power that is affordable, reliable, and clean, particularly in this part of the state. The plan we are announcing today will help ensure all three of those for the people of Austin, and Central Texas. What has impressed environmental regulators is the fact that the LCRA stepped forward and requested permission to improve the plants. This didn't happen because of an action of the TNRCC. This happened because of an action of the individuals that are sitting right behind you on the right and the individual that's sitting, that was sitting, well, he's right here. Um, that's why this happened. And until those individuals and those other companies step forward like these board members and this general manager, then nothing's going to happen. Units 1 and 2 are co-owned by the LCRA and the City of Austin. They will share the cost of the $130 million in improvements. Austin is very much at home with this initiative. And we appreciate having a partner and a neighbor like LCRA that shares our desire for quality of life excellence and a clean environment. Assuming the TNRCC approves the flexible permit, the renovations of Unit 1 and 2 could begin by January 2003. Congratulations to the 2002 LCRA scholarship winners. This year, 145 seniors from all over the region were nominated by their schools. Besides good grades, the criteria for selection includes extracurricular activities, community involvement, and financial need. 
Screening and selection committees made up of LCRA employees had the difficult task of choosing our 20 scholarship winners. I've enjoyed it immensely. Probably the, the first thing that uh, struck me and, and I continue to enjoy is just the opportunity to meet uh, kids who represent families that uh, are, are so uh, motivated to do well both in school and out of school. I mean, it's, it's extremely heartwarming, and um, it just kind of renews your faith in, in, uh, in kids. Each scholarship winner receives a $2,000 check. Encouragement to look at the LCRA as a possible future employer and some very good advice. Besides being educated, you need to have good moral values. Uh, and integ integrity is, is one of the, uh, the best values that, that you can choose to uh, try to adopt. Do that, be honest, uh, care for your fellow man, and everything will be all right for you in the future. Congratulations to you. Uh, well, it means a lot to me. First, being nominated by my school is a big honor, um, and then being selected as a finalist to interview. And then I received a letter um, telling me that I did receive a scholarship, and I was just so excited receiving that much money to put towards my education. As the son of an LCRA employee, I'm really honored that LCRA is giving back to the community, to the people who've worked there, and it, uh, it's a real honor altogether just to receive this scholarship. It really means a lot to me because it gives me a chance to go to college. Unlike my parents, didn't get a chance to go, so it fulfills not my dream, but only theirs too. And I'm really honored to be able to give them that kind of um, fulfillment for them so they can see that I go when they didn't get to. LCRA's Transmission Services also awarded five $1,000 scholarships as part of their Tomorrow program. This was the very first board of directors at the Lower Colorado River Authority. The group included some now familiar names at LCRA, like Thomas C. Ferguson, Roy Inks, and Ralph Yarbrough. The nine members held their first meeting at the Travis County Courthouse on February 19, 1935. Since that time, there have been 120 people who have served as members of the LCRA board. These folks are leaders in their communities, people who care a great deal about the issues that affect us all. As board members, they have given a great deal of time and energy to LCRA. Each of you has served either almost six years, close to it, or, or some of you even longer than six years. You had to love LCRA to do that, and that love doesn't die, and therefore, purely from a business standpoint, you all are a great resource for LCRA, and I don't want to lose it. That's why Joe Beal invited former board members to this reunion luncheon, along with current board members and senior staff, so they could visit and find out what's going on at LCRA. We have a major agreement with American Electric Power to build all of their new transmission facilities that ERCOT said was needed. Joe updated the group on the latest news from each line of business at LCRA, and he told them about the current status of electric deregulation in the state. Being county judge, I'm in a lot of public meetings, and we have discussions about events that happen, and issues come up about LCRA, and of course I'm always happy to be informed where I can respond to those questions or comments. So I think it's very helpful to have a forum like this where we get updated. All of us are in our different communities and in our different uh, chosen professions and, and areas and uh, we hear a lot and see a lot about LCRA and we're able to tell the people in those areas uh, all of the good things that LCRA has to offer and the fact that they are a good neighbor. I think it's a great idea. I learn a lot each time I come and uh, I enjoy that. I, you know, and I continue to think that LCRA is just about the best place in the world and has the best people working here. It's, it's a pleasure to meet everybody again and to renew friendships. I guess I really am a great ambassador because any time LCRA is mentioned, I have to say something nice about it. And I think that people are realizing the good things of LCRA and not 
there's some people in our county that think it's part of government and they are not friendly to government for some reason or other, but they are seeing the good work we do and it is changing their opinion a lot. Everyone agreed that the board reunion events should take place at least once a year. This month, meet Connie Granberg, representing Blanco County. Connie Granberg was appointed to the LCRA Board of Directors by Governor Rick Perry in 2001. Connie grew up on a goat farm in Blanco County, and from a very early age, she worked with the goats and helped take care of them. When you have a thousand head of nanny goats, and about February you have a thousand baby goats, sometimes more because of twins. Um, I had to get up every morning and saddle a horse and ride the fence lines and, and catch wormy goats and doctor goats. and um, So my theory was I didn't want to do this the rest of my life. I'm going to go get an education. Connie loved school and went on to get her bachelor's degree from Texas Tech University in microbiology. She worked as a laboratory technician for several years. Then in 1984, Connie and her husband Henry went into a new business. Blank Auto Parts is Connie. Connie says the business has grown over the years and has been a good investment, but learning the auto parts business was not always easy. It helps to have a very good memory. For the longest time, I didn't even know what the parts were. I could just look at them and know that I had them in a box back there, and I knew where the box was. I didn't know what it was, what it fit, or anything, but I knew I had one just like it in a box on the shelf. Now, since that time, you know, I've learned. Uh, Henry had to take me to the junkyard for about three months every afternoon after we bought the store and point to things and, and tell me what it was, what it did, how it worked. And I had a little bit of just natural ability. Henry says that for the past six months, Connie's been reading, studying, and learning everything she can about the LCRA. Yeah, I think she's been energized by it. She's, she's, well, she's not doing the same thing every day like we do here and it's something new and different, and it's a learning experience, and so that's why she, she craves that sort of atmosphere. Connie Granberg is very involved in her community. She's been on the board of directors here at the Gym of the Hills Community Center since 1987. It was once called Brontosaurus, or Thunder Lizard. I wonder why. Connie is also very involved with the Blanco School District. She supports after school and summer learning programs and serves on the boards of the Blanco Community Learning Center and the Wellness Center. Armored lizard. For years, she has gone to the elementary school and helped kids with their reading. I started out with some second graders. These kids are in high school now and every time they see me they have to give me a hug, so it's worth it. Connie says Blanco is growing very rapidly and water is a critical issue there as it is for the LCRA and the entire state. So that's an eight. Meanwhile, back at the store, Henry and Connie discuss the delicate balance it sometimes takes to be married and work together too. It's kind of been a trial working together sometimes, but it's also a treat a lot of times because we can, all, <laughs> we've, we can almost tell what the other one's thinking at any given moment, mm -hmm. you know, we work together and live together for so long. It's uh, been interesting. Yeah, and everybody says we're starting to look alike too. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> Connie Granberg's term on the LCRA board will expire in 2007. volunteers and cancer survivors took part in the fourth annual Marble Falls Relay for Life in June. Teams raise money by selling these luminaries honoring those who are battling cancer and in memory of those who have lost the fight. LCRA employees from Dams and Hydroelectric, the Ferguson Power Plant, and River Resource Management teamed up to raise more than $2,300.
Cancer touches so many lives, so many of our coworkers and our friends and family. And I think it means a lot to the cancer survivors to walk around and see these people that are out here that have raised money for cancer research or to see their name on a luminary bag and just know that somebody is thinking about them and is supporting uh, finding a cure for cancer. El Surrey Employees United Charities also donated $2,500 to the Marble Falls Relay for Life. Overall, the event raised $61,000 for cancer research. We'd like to leave you this month with some uplifting sights and sounds from LCRA's Juneteenth celebration at the General Office Complex. The celebration of Juneteenth has grown with more participation from each generation of the descendants of those slaves as they become more aware of their family history, how they tie into that significant day, there's more awareness of the event. I am the daughter of a former slave and my parents fled the South because of racism and I am proud to say I'm back in the South <laughs> and that it has changed and I'm happy to be here. I am proud now to be here at the LCRA to celebrate the ending of slavery in Texas. A storm of life will blow. They're sure to come and go. They meet me at a time when I'm calm and doing a fine. The my soul, he's always on board, he rocks me in his arms while riding through the storm. Stormy winds 